First flying in 1943, the de Havilland Vampire was Britain's second jet aircraft and the first to be powered by a single jet engine. Originally known as the Spider Crab, she was built entirely by de Havilland and was to serve in air forces around the world until 1990. Her distinctive twin boom design came about as a result of her highly durable engine, which was named the Goblin. The Goblin engine was the first jet engine designed and built by the de Havilland Engine Company. Um, it was about the simplest and most compact layout that you could imagine with a single um, centrifugal impeller uh, and straight through combustion chambers and a single stage turbine. Having joined de Havilland in 1936, David went on to join the Vampire Design Team, which had started work on the project in 1942. Partly because of the excellence of the design and partly because of its simplicity, it proved to be very reliable. Uh, it was running not much more than a year after it was first started in design. Um, and then uh, we were given the job of uh, designing the Vampire. It was particularly important in those early <coughs> jet engines with uh, operating at a very low pressure ratio to minimize the losses in getting the air in and out. Um, and this layout devised by Bishop, our chief designer, um, proved to be very successful. The name of de Havilland has now been adopted by de Havilland Aviation, a company which specializes in maintaining classic aircraft, including a number of vampires. The basic principle of a jet engine is the suck, the squeeze, the bang and the blow. This engine is a Goblin 3 fitted to a Vampire T11. Uh, the, the suck part is down here, which is the intakes, which are bifurcated, coming from either side of the wings. Internally, which you can't see here, is the uh, centrifugal turbine, which is the squeeze. Um, this then blows the air into these burner cans, which the fuel is also injected from the front end here and ignited by igniters. The uh, gases expand and blow out through a rear turbine, which again drives the front compressor, which then increases the power, etc., etc., and then blows the residu residual out of the jet pipe. I I've worked on everything from Tristars to uh, Phantoms. Um, this aeroplane, uh, or this engine, is certainly one of the best we've worked on. It's simple, uh, it has no vices. Many of the design team that were to work on the Vampire had already been involved with that de Havilland thoroughbred, the Mosquito. Well, the similarities between the uh, Mosquito and the uh, Vampire lay in the fuselage structure, which was this uh, laminated um, uh, shell, outside very thin ply, and then a thick core of balsa wood and another thin ply inside and that was formed uh, under high pressure on a, uh, <coughs> a male mould and produced this very smooth, rigid surface. And so the same, exactly the same technique was used on the two aircraft. Well, I think well, the people's feelings towards the test flight were one of great excitement, uh, that here was something so new. Uh, the, the whole factory were allowed to come out to see it, and we all watched it. And, uh, and it's, of course, a marvellous feeling, particularly when you see it coming back to land and everyone crowds around to see what the test pilot thought about it. And it's more a question of the immediate excitement rather than the, the longer-term prospects, particularly, I think, for younger people like us who were not involved with the politics and the government side of it so much. But uh, just great excitement and the thrill that this really was working, and particularly when it turned out that the aircraft was much faster than expected. It, was, it all succeeded far more than we ever dreamt. Uh, uh, it was almost too good to be true to start with. It was so fast, so smooth and beautiful aircraft to fly. The first Vampire was flown by Geoffrey de Havilland. However, he was soon to be joined by a team of test pilots, including John Wilson, who after flying mosquitoes, amassed over 800 hours in Gloucester Meteors. see the visibility out of here is absolutely marvellous on all three, four sides really. 
can't quite see behind you, but very nearly. And the, the aeroplane was extremely easy to fly. It responded beautifully to controls, and it was fully aerobatic, which is not easy to do in a Mosquito. You, you don't have the excess power that this aeroplane has, which makes it so delightful to fly. Chasing in and amongst clouds and that sort of thing was delightful in this, much more difficult in a Mosquito. The Vampire was an exceptionally versatile aircraft and set many aviation records, including being the first jet to cross the Atlantic and the first to take off and land on a carrier. Her simple, robust and reliable construction made her popular with many air forces. Well over 4,000 were built, a quarter of those under license, and she was to be used in a variety of roles, including as a ground attack aircraft and a night fighter. Well, it's all got to be put down to the design. Uh, I mean, this, this one is 50 years old. She's still going strong. She's still flying every week, if possible. Uh, you know, this has got to say something about the aeroplane itself. Um, they're still going strong. A lot of people want to buy them nowadays. It's charisma, it's style, uh, the grace. There, there's nothing quite like the Vampire. Um, the sound of it, uh, it, it's beautiful to fly, um, very well harmonised, that, that is, that all the controls work together, um, it all feels right. Um, at high speed it's very heavy, but at the same time you feel everything, you're, you're completely with it. There's nothing quite like it. The shape, when you see it flying, you know it's a vampire of venom. That's the only things it could be. They're just beautiful. What we put in now is, is Jet A1 fuel, but it'll run perfectly happy on heating oil, anything really. If, it, if it'll burn, you could run it on it. This T11 trainer that Andrew shares with its three co-owners is based at Bournemouth Airport, the same place the first T11 was flown to by John Wilson on its maiden flight. Uh, the canopy itself on the original aeroplane that I first flew, the first prototype, the canopy was nothing like as nice as this one here, uh, and it was, of course didn't have ejection seats in it or anything like that. So from that point of view, it was rather a, a, a backward step from the vampire, the single seat vampire, from the point of view of the cockpit. The, the early vampires were very, very simple aeroplanes and very easy to fly, very easy to taxi. Uh, and, of course, with a very good view out, so much better than other aeroplanes like uh, uh, the single-seat fighters which had big Rolls-Royce Merlin engines up in front and a nose up like that so you couldn't see wh where you were taxiing and you had to zigzag all the time. Didn't have to do any of that in a vampire. It's ever so much easier. It really is a, a super aeroplane for anybody learning to fly in a jet aeroplane because it has all the good characteristics uh, that you find in a propeller-driven aeroplane and none of the bad ones. My first trip in a vampire occurred at Swindon, and I think it was 1959, late 59. I'd just finished at RAF Turnhill on the Piston Provost and we used to, in those days, do what was called advanced flying training on the vampire. Uh, was it exciting? Of course it was exciting. It was a new aeroplane. You were a student pilot in the Royal Air Force hoping to finish and get your wings. Um, just for some stupid statistics, um, of 56 of us who started, only eight of us got our wings. So you can imagine the sort of pressure and the anticipation that you had about flying this and in nine months' time having your wings pinned on you. These things were all hand-built. They all have their own character. No two vampires are the same. They're just fabulous to fly, everything about them. We got in there quickly. We made uh, an aircraft as soon as we possibly could, but with an eye on it being an operational aircraft, not just a research aircraft. And uh, it all worked, more or less, straight away. There were very few things wrong with it. In fact, same things were so successful, it was much better than we ever expected on speed. And uh, uh, we got in the marketplace and uh, the aircraft uh, handled well, it was uh, straightforward construction, durable, and uh, it, the message just spread. I think we had an outstanding chief designer in Ronald Bishop and an outstanding team. 
I, I think it was just uh, one of these teamwork things that really worked. And uh, it's difficult to create these things from scratch. They just happened to come together right. Of course, it meant a lot to people like me because we knew we were in at the start of something really new. And then to look back on that and realize that uh, it all worked so well, not thanks to me, but thanks to the other engineers who did the hardware, both engine and airframe, um, I'm very proud to have been involved. It has a tremendous history behind it, so it's very important that we actually keep these aeroplanes, if we can, flying, but if not, just acknowledge the importance of them by making a film like this.